Jordan Love may be a new quarterback, but the Packers have to keep the pedal to the metal when it comes to decision-making this season. Things like fourth downs, things like early down pass frequency. They have to be more aggressive, not less aggressive with Jordan Love. I'll explain why on today's show. Plus, what is a success this season for the Green Bay Packers? What is a failure? I think the answer might surprise you. Plus, Leslie Frazier stopped by in Green Bay for a little chat. What does that mean? Is there something there? We'll talk about all of that on today's show. You are Locked On Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. So, there's a bugaboo of mine. And it's not even really Packers related. It is more about quarterbacks. And what I see too many teams do... And I think the Packers did this with Brett Hundley to an extent. And when they didn't do it, it actually really worked. You can't expect an inexperienced quarterback to go 12 plays, 80 yards. You just can't do it consistently. Aaron Rodgers, when teams were living in too high, in 2021 especially, they found ways to manipulate everything that was going on because they had Aaron Rodgers, they had Devontae Adams, they had a good offensive line, a good run game, and they could solve problems on the fly in real time. Rodgers and Adams had the sort of connection, they have the sort of skill and proven talent that they could handle anything. You add in Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, all of that stuff, plus a really good scheme from Matt LaFleur. When you have Aaron Rodgers, you have a certain faith in what is going to happen. But you can't be afraid to let Jordan Love cook. And not because you think Jordan Love is awesome. And and by the way, even if you even if you think Jordan Love is awesome, you can't expect him to be consistent down to down play to play every game, every drive. And What I have always, always, always wanted to see more teams do with backup quarterbacks, with young quarterbacks, is introduce variance. Big plays. Take your shots. And actually, what's remarkable is this is happening. When you look at the top average depth of target quarterbacks out there, Marcus Mariota is near the top of the list. He averaged 10 and a half air yards last season. He got benched. Tua averaged almost 10 yards. We think of Tua as a game manager, the ultimate game manager. He averaged almost 10 yards an attempt, average depth of target. Aaron Rodgers, eight. He was 18th in average depth of target. They have to push the ball down the field. Well, how are they going to do that, Peter, you might be asking? I'm glad you asked. Early down passes. When you look at the the best offenses in the league, they pass early. Here are just the top six in early down pass frequency from last year. Bengals, Chiefs, Bills, Chargers, Seahawks, Eagles. That's six playoff teams, by the way. 
but it's also some of the best quarterbacks in the league, but not all the best. Jalen Hurts, there's still questions about his ability to carry a passing game. Geno Smith, that's supposed to be a run first team. And that is a team, by the way, that was running an offense that has a lot of roots. That Shane Waldron offense is a Sean McVay offense. It's a Kyle Shanahan offense. It's a Matt LaFleur offense. So is Zach Taylor in Cincinnati. Yes, having a good quarterback means passing early, but guess who else? Early down passing offense. The Patriots, the Ravens, the Dolphins, even the Cardinals, even though Kyler Murray was hurt half the year. Throwing on early downs is a great way to get mismatch opportunities because you have teams, they're they're more expecting to run. The Packers are going to see a ton, a ton of heavy boxes early on in downs, a ton of base personnel. The Packers were 17th in neutral situation pass frequency last year, so not third downs. That's not enough. That wasn't enough last year, and it won't be enough this year. Yes, you can be a run-centric offense and still throw it early downs. I think running on third down would help. The Packers actually passed overall on first and 10, 8% below expectation, but 2% below expectation overall. They could be throwing more on first down. Well, how? You've got these young receivers. You've got this unproven quarterback. You can't just throw more and expect it to work. No, that's true. So what you do is you use play action more often. First down play action is an incredible tool. Rodgers finished 18th among quarterbacks last year with at least 100 dropbacks in play action percentage. You know what Marcus Mariota's was? 44%. Desmond Ritter, after he became the starter, almost 40%. Tua Tungavailoa, 43%. Other guys, let's just, let's just give you an idea of this. Ahead of Aaron Rodgers on the list, Daniel Jones, Zach Wilson, Michael Floor offense, Justin Fields, Baker Mayfield, PJ Walker, Cooper Rush, Sam Darnold, Taylor Heineke. Mostly bad quarterbacks. In fact, I would I would argue universally bad quarterbacks, at least bad throwers. But you make life easier with play action. Daniel Jones finished ahead of Aaron Rodgers in EPA per play. Tua finished ahead of Aaron Rodgers by in EPA per play by a mile. Sam Darnold did too. Marcus Mariota did too. Kirk Cousins, who was also ahead in play action rate, did too. And Rodgers was only a spot ahead of Justin Fields who is one of the least productive passers we have ever seen. Play action is a cheat code. And play action sets up shot play opportunities. This offense is designed to go run with play action that creates big plays over the top. And as I mentioned, Marcus Mariota, Average depth of target over 10. Marcus Mariota. Jordan Love has so much more arm talent, especially at this point in their respective careers, than Marcus Mariota, than Taylor Heineke, than Daniel Jones. He's so much. I, I thought it was interesting. Um, Mina Kimes and Stephen Rees did a, a quarterback draft. And Jordan Love was like third or fourth from last. And it's like, he, he, Jordan Love is so much more talented than someone like Desmond Ritter. So much more talented than someone like Daniel Jones. I, I even think so much more physically gifted than someone like Tua Tunga Bailoa. Now, those guys have, have more proven on-field reps. But, by the way, Tua could like re- almost retire this offseason. Injury history, all that stuff. Jordan Love doesn't have that in the same kind of way. Throw on early downs, especially using play action. And that's when you can create your shot plays. This was the best second down offense in the league last year with Aaron Rodgers. First in DVOA. And they have been in the Matt LaFleur era absolutely phenomenal. In 2020, they were historically great on second down. They are so good when they get in advantageous second down situations. Second and short, second and medium. 
at creating big plays. I you can argue all they need is a positive play on first down, but when you when you run the play action boots and it's, you know, it's a, a slide or it's those split zones where you, it's just a little flick out to the receiver and they can they can go and run. Well, if the defense covers it, Jordan Love is more capable of saying, okay, I'm going to do what Daniel Jones does. And if it's not there, I'm taking off and using my legs in ways that Aaron Rodgers at age 38, 39 over the last few years just hasn't been as able to do. The physical gifts are there. Give him the opportunity to show them off, but create variance. Don't expect him to go 12 plays, 80 yards. See if you can pepper in some three plays, 80 yards. Because that's what you have Christian Watson for. It's what you have Romeo Dobbs for. Dontavian Wicks was an excellent vertical receiver at Virginia. And keep going for it on fourth down. According to Ben Baldwin's model, no team made better decisions on fourth down in 2022 than the Packers. They led the league in go rate when a win probability would have changed by more than 1%. And if you toggle it down to half a percent, Green Bay is still in the lead. In fact, it actually gets bigger between them and the second team. They consistently make the right choices on fourth down, but it's still, in in terms of the the go kick model, they're still going a little over 60% of the time. They could be even more aggressive. And with Jordan Love, when you have to be willing to introduce this variance, now is the time to be even more aggressive, to max out your opportunities to gain on the margins. You need to take every marginal advantage at your disposal. That means play action. That means pre-snap motion. That means going on fourth down. That means taking shots when you have the opportunity and hitting on them. All of those things the Packers can do, but the Packers should do this season to maximize this year with Jordan Love. All right, speaking of Jordan Love, and what is a successful or failure year this season. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's right, not just $1,000, $2,500. I've got a bunch of NFL futures that I've already played. I got the Packers to win the division, Packers to make the playoffs, Jets to miss the playoffs. Lions to miss the playoffs, or maybe it's Lions under. I think it's Lions under. I'm dubious. And then I see a clip of Sam Laporta running. I'm like, ooh, they they could be really good. There's no better place to bet on all the action than America's number one sports book. Visit fandle.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. NBA finals kicked off last night. You might not get that many opportunities to bet on the NBA Finals, so get in on them now at FanDuel.com slash LockedOnFanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Every dayers. Joe Marino is going to be on the show next week. He and Kyle Krabs did a show on um, their channel for Locked On about the Packers, the things that they see this year team building wise, and so we're going to have him on the show next week to talk about his view from an outsider's perspective on this Packers team and where they stand right now. So this is a conversation that I think is really important as we try and set expectations. What does success look like for the Green Bay Packers? Now, I have said my expectation for the Packers is that, or at least my prediction, is that they're going to be A a solid to good team, an 8, 9, 10 win team, they can be that. And failure, let's put failure to the side. Success, obviously you go to the playoffs, that's a success. But that's not the only way this year can be a success. Remember what happened in 2008. The Packers showed a lot of promise. Aaron Rodgers, I think, proved that he deserved at least the chance that he was given by Ted Thompson to be the Packers starter, earn that contract right away. But they won six games. 
Now, I, they were a top half of the team, a uh, top half of the league by DVOA team. And so you, you can go underlying metrics, say that they were better than their record. They lost a slew of games on the final drives, but they lost. This is why we can't measure success solely through wins and losses. You are not, and I'm going to die on this hill. You are not what your record says you are until the end of the season and you're the Super Bowl winner. Then that's the only time. Every every other time, like I guess you could make the case, okay, if you win the division, your record says you're the division winner. Yes, but that doesn't mean you're the best team in the division. We can think of many times when it's been the case where the best team in the division did not win the division. I, I think last year that's probably the case in the NFC North. The Packers, offensively, success is they show a lot of promise. Jordan Love, in particular, the success or failure of this season hinges almost exclusively to me on Jordan Love. Because last year, you could say, okay, they need a Super Bowl or the defense or whatever. And and by any metrics, last year was a failure. They underperformed in a lot of different ways. Aaron Rodgers underperformed. The defense underperformed. I thought the coaching staff in general underperformed. A number of key players, Devondre Campbell. But they their win total is seven and a half right now at FanDuel. No one expects this team to be great. So success or failure has to be measured relative to expectation. If no one expects them to be great, this is our external success or failure. Internally, they may have a different standard, of course. They want to go win games. But let's say they finish 7-10. and 10. But Jordan Love has a couple games where he throws for 300 yards and four touchdowns and just looks awesome. And then he has a couple games where it's just sort of like, eh. And the defense... I think you you want to see the defense take a step forward. So you lose some of these like 17, 14 games where Jordan Love doesn't play great, but the defense plays well enough to win, but you just the offense doesn't get quite enough. That that's a successful season. 7 and 10 and and the shape of the team looking like that, that's a success. Like there's going to be so much more nuance in how this looks at the end of the year. Obviously, 10 and 7, 11 and 6, whatever. Like, you go to the playoffs, unquestionably a, a success. Unless, like, Sean Clifford takes you there. Because then you have these weird, you know, it leads you, it leaves you in a place where you don't want to be. In all likelihood. So, that's success. It's, it's Jordan Love and it's the defense. We know what the offensive line is. We know what the running game is. We need to see the defense get better. We need to see improvement being made there, given all the investment there. And if it's not, you got to make a change. Just have to make a change. Because this is a team now that is growing and moving forward. If Joe Barry can't figure it out now, he's got all the pieces. It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. And everyone loves Joe Barry in that building. The other coaches, you know, families of the coaches, they love Joe Barry. But... Love doesn't win football games. Jordan Love might. The only true failure, I guess there's two. The worst case scenario is they're three and 14. Jordan Love stinks. And if they're if that's the case, light it up. I, and I think that there is a case for saying, okay, well, Brian Gutekinds, you made this bet with Matt LaFleur. Jordan Love can't play. You lit your relationship with the with the admittedly cantankerous starting quarterback on fire. Won two MVPs. And instead of drafting T. Higgins, you drafted this guy and he sucks. Like that is a failure. That's a disaster. But even that, even that is a win in its clarity. Because then you go into this upcoming season, you're going to have a top five pick, probably a top three pick potentially in a class where there's two quarterbacks and like an all-world receiver prospect, a couple all-world tackle prospects. 
there's some legit, like this draft class upcoming looks like it is going to be awesome. Now you try and build something moving forward. Now, whether that's with Brian Gutekinds and Matt LaFleur, if it's me personally, I said yesterday on the show, like I think they're going to get the chance to, to move forward here. Being that bad means your defense probably is terrible. Like think about Brett Hundley. They won some games, even against like you, you play enough cupcakes, you play enough bad teams. You got to win five, six games. Like three and 14 would be, then it's time to just start over. I don't think that's a reasonable scenario because I just don't think there's that's going to happen. The talent is too good for that to happen and the schedule is is favorable. So I just, barring some injuries. Here's the failure to me. The likely scenario that, that I would go, okay, this season was a failure. We get a bad evaluation on Jordan Love because the receivers aren't good enough. Let's say Christian Watson gets hurt. We don't want this to happen, obviously, God forbid, but he gets hurt and the other guys just aren't good enough. No one's open. There's even, even with Matt LaFleur skiing up, you know, in his bag, there's only so much you can do on third and eight. Guys still need to win. And you just, you there's no read on Jordan Love because he just has no health. It's sort of the Justin Fields of last year. And I'll be the first to admit, look, I think Justin Fields was bad last year as a passer. But he's thrown Dante Pettis and Equinemius St. Brown. Darnell Mooney was, was not good last year, was hurt last year. The offensive line was bad. That was a disaster. Not being able to get a real read on Jordan Love because your infrastructure isn't good enough, that's a failure. Now, I happen to believe the infrastructure is quite good. With this offensive line and this running game and Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs and the investments you made at tight end, I know they're young players, then, then you you got to see the flashes. If the flashes are there, that's enough. Because this is a two-year build. Not being able to get a good read on Justin Fields, or on, Justin Fields, on Jordan Love, because your infrastructure is bad, is problematic because you are going into a draft where you're probably going to have two first-round picks. So like being in a Daniel Jones situation where Jordan Love doesn't have to do much but your defense plays well enough, you scheme up well enough, your run game is good enough, you win 10 games, you get into the playoffs, you you lose in the first round of the playoffs, and you don't know what to do with Jordan Love. That's kind of problematic. Now, that's not a failure because you went to the playoffs, but it's problematic. Like I, This is not as simple right now as when Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback and it was just like, okay, you win the Super Bowl, it's a success. Any, anything less, anything less is a failure. That's not where we are. That's not where this team is. And I want I want everyone to understand that coming in because the expectations are not that. It is going to have a lot more nuance than that. What you want to see is Jordan Love showing something and you hope that that translates to winning games, but it doesn't have to. You need a read on him and you need the defense to look a little better, at least a little better. Eric Stokes coming off injury. Rashawn Gary coming off injury. This is put up or shut up time for Joe Barry. And speaking of that, I want to talk about I'm going to talk about Joe Barry in just a second. Before we do, thanks to everyone who's locked on Packers, their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you, every dayers. We've got great stuff coming up on the leap. Um, I have the, the piece that I talked about. In the A block, I wrote about it on Wednesday. Um, go check that out. Locked on Sports Today is out there for you. Get caught up on not just Packer stuff, but all of the biggest stories in sports in under 20 minutes. So, as part of a an interesting program, the NFL has done a lot a lot of interesting, though not always effective things, to try and get different coaching candidates through the pipelines, especially with minority candidates. And so Leslie Frazier came to Green Bay for a couple days. The reason I bring this up is because there's going to be a lot of pressure on Joe Barry. A lot of pressure on Joe Barry to get this season right. I would consider bringing in someone like Leslie Frazier, who I believe Joe Barry has worked with. Certainly they've worked under similar systems. And say, look, this is another veteran guy. You guys are both veteran coaches. This is not a, you know... 
Jordan Love and you bring in a, a, a veteran who might beat him out. You bring in Andy Dalton. You go, well, if you don't play well enough, here's Andy Dalton. It wouldn't quite be that. It's just like, hey, you guys come from similar trees. Leslie Frazier is is a, a new voice. Let, let, him, let him come in, senior consultant, senior assistant, and fix this defense. And if the defense doesn't get fixed, for whatever reason, you have a potential candidate in-house in Leslie Frazier to replace him as defensive coordinator. Now, of course, the idea of these programs is to give Leslie Frazier another opportunity to be a head coach. But I just thought it was an interesting idea for Green Bay because they could be in the market for a new defensive coordinator in a year's time. And having someone like this, whether he's eventually a candidate or not, like Vic Fangio was a consultant in Philadelphia last year for that defense. My guess is it helped. Having someone like Leslie Frazier, who was a really good coach in Buffalo, would be a benefit to this Packers team. He's been talking to other teams as part of this process. You know, spend two days here, two days there, two days there, two days there. But that's to be a touch point. Hey, talk to these teams. Is there something there? Is there an opportunity there? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But I just wanted to put this on your radar because I think it would be a really good idea for the Packers to say, hey, Leslie, why don't you come be a consultant? Come be an assistant coach. Um, Come, you know, burnish your credentials for another year. And get an opportunity again if this all goes well. You know, have have some assistant head coach title. I think he had an assistant head coach title in Buffalo. So just an interesting idea, just something to think about over the next couple days and weeks as you think about how mad you're going to be at Joe Barry when Preston Smith is covering Devontae Adams against Las Vegas. Um, we're going to be back next week. A lot more here on Locked on Packers. Um, June is here. Technically, we are not um, always going to be five days a week or we don't have to be as part of our off-season schedule. We are still going to be as often as I can be over the next couple of weeks. Um, so just understand that other people are going to may, may take some time. We're going to be here every day as much as possible. There may be a day here, a day there where I decide, okay, it's a summer Friday. We're not going to do that. But we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Uh, follow this space for more. Follow me on Twitter, in fact. Uh, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. F- subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live on YouTube, on our Locked on Packers YouTube page, you can do that. So you can stay Locked on Packers. <laughs>